If you don't have a car in Vladivostok for some reason, you'll feel like a pathetic nobody. It would certainly be better if they had built at least one good public space instead of a church. Something went wrong with the tiles. Why are you standing on a pedestrian crossing? So, this is bad, the whole thing needs to be reconstructed. There are new holes in the playground and the waterfront, because kids are playing here. Vladivostok, France, urgently needs a road revolution. Korean tourists fell on the broken downstairs, it's a real shame. It's so gross, how do people live here? It's awful, folks. Hi everybody, I'm in Vladivostok, I think it's symbolic that I'm starting this video with the car park. We start in car park, we'll go from here and I guess we'll end up in a car park, because Vladivostok is one big car park. I've been here many times and I don't like this city, honestly, I just don't. I criticize it every time and every time the locals are offended by what I write. I very much doubt that anything has changed here, that anything has become better. Vladivostok continues to destroy its public transport. Every year the transport situation here is getting worse and worse. They are not trying to solve it at all. There's a complete mess with the advertising, with signage, with new construction plots. All in all, in my opinion, it's bad here. The only thing that's good here is nature. Oh, we have a great nature and we haven't totally messed it up yet. Perhaps that could become Vladivostok's catchphrase. There is not a single view in Vladivostok where there are no cars, everything is full of them. Look at those white roads, everything is covered with tarmac. The pedestrians are left with just a few meters to walk on, 90% between the houses is road for cars. This is the heart of the city, what good has happened in Vladivostok in the past year? Unfortunately nothing, everyone is leaving. Well, I'll write again that nothing good has happened and they will tell me that I just didn't fight it again. There's fresh tarmac, but it's an accident that it's here. I still don't understand why they haven't introduced paid parking. I think paid parking is such an obvious solution to the problem that it should have been there a long time ago. If you and I were somewhere in Europe right now, there would be a very quiet street with one lane of traffic in each direction. There would probably have been tram tracks, there would have been white pavements, that's how pavement ends in the center. You see, we are about to cross the chain of cars and we have to start crossing somehow, probably like this. I followed the locals, the locals seem to know a secret. It's probably safe to cross here, everyone is walking down the road for some reason, and yes, the car adds. The one thing we needed the most, it's like a bus station or a transport hub or something. It's a miserable place with old Korean buses and minibuses crammed in. Friends, obviously everything here is upsetting, but I believe I can find something positive. If you don't have a car in Vladivostok for some reason, you'll feel like a pathetic nobody. Vladivostok is a good example to show to all those who are making their transport revolutions and is trying to make a cities that will fit in cars. The traffic light phases here are absolutely terrible. You have to wait for several minutes for a green light to come on. It's no good. You see people don't wait and they just go to red. Here you can see how narrow the pavements are and how wide the roads are. In the city center you can see the shards of old architecture. It's all in terrible state, of course, it's all dusty, dirty, unmaintained and falling apart. Many of the buildings are disfigured by additions and extensions. No one cares after the architecture here. Last time I came here, a year and a half ago, there was no church here. Now the church is completed, that's probably the only change I found. Of course it would be better if they build at least one good public space instead of the church, but apparently there is no demand for public spaces so far, but there is a demand for churches. The railway tracks that run through the center of the city have not been removed yet. They've been partially dismantled, but it's obvious that they needed to be tunneled in. And then make the tunnel a public space, for example, like they did in Barcelona. We will try to cross here now, there's no pedestrian crossing here, of course, but a subway, because anyone who doesn't have a car has to suffer. The subway has been turned into a market, as an often is. There are shops everywhere, it is noisy, dirty and unpleasant. Most importantly, it's inaccessible to the vulnerable, because you can't get down with a pram. The same applies to a person with lots of bags and sick people, it's just inconvenient for them. By the way, if you stumbled upon my channel by accident, I want to reiterate that ramps like this are useless, especially if used for prams, because it's dangerous. 
You can't let a child down here under any circumstances. There's nothing on the central square. Just a car park here. There's probably some kind of event today, so the parking is only half full. You see the quality of public spaces? Makes you want to spend some time here, doesn't it? A temple, a bridge and a monument. The very center of Vladivostok. There are comfortable benches. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to sit on a bench like this. There used to be traffic lights and you could control the traffic here. The cars there have merged in somehow. There hasn't been all this fuss. But because the traffic is run by completely incompetent fools, they don't have a traffic light here. There is an inconvenient subway. All the cars are parked and traffic jams form here. If you suddenly want to get a good view of Vladivostok, go to the website of my project Past View. It's my project with historical photographs, it has the world's largest database of historical photos, which are sorted by locations and dates. You can choose Vladivostok and look at beautiful 19th, 20th century city. It will be more or less a good Vladivostok. Look at what it was like and compare it with what's left now. What's good in Vladivostok? I don't even know, but I'm not a local, I study here. Great, you study here, but what do you like about the city? I like the architecture, old one, old architecture. So what do you like about Vladivostok? I don't know. Why doesn't anybody know? Then I write posts, make videos, and everyone says, why didn't you show anything good? You go up and ask people who live here, and they say, we don't know. That's Kier, and he's filming a trash bin. Mind you, I didn't ask for it, he did it himself. Well, it's not a clean bean, but it's a beautiful unclean. Every time I see the sign, teach your children manners, I always feel like there's a big man that's throwing a little man in the bin. Something went wrong with the tiles. For some reason, all the tiles look broken. They should call it this a Moscow street. Among other things, Vladivostok is very interesting in terms of its contrast, when in one place there are wooden crooked slanted old houses where people dry laundry in the yards, the toilets are outside and everything is overgrown with some wild vines. And just behind them there are some super modern skyscrapers and buildings. But I look at this with sadness, because I understand how quickly the historical layers are erased and how nothing that was here 50 or 100 years ago is left and how a new city emerges. And when you look at the quality of this new architecture, it's all the same, intended for a short time. In another 20 years you will see a completely different city again, it's not very cool. It's cool when you preserve the historical layers, when the city has some kind of identity, some kind of unique understandable style. There is this wooden staircase I don't even know if you can walk on it the old post boxes are very beautiful it's details like this that remind us of the past what's going on here they put a pavement that ends in the fence what are people doing of course they just walk around the fence what idiot came out with that we are going to do that now too, we are now going to cross the road in the wrong place because a fence has been built here and these idiots who designed it believe that we have to go to a pedestrian crossing. We have to walk 200 meters one way and the same way back. Also, we have to climb up these stairs to cross the road according to the rules because they don't made a pedestrian crossing here. Lots of people suffer or break the rules and accident rate is even higher because cars don't expect to see a pedestrian here, nobody cares about it. That's why if you see a U-turn street in your city, you should know that it's a big mistake. Has anything good happened to the city in recent years? It's got a lot better. What has gotten better? Any public spaces have been created, for example, the Tsarevich embankment, but it was a long time ago. Well, a relatively long time ago. If we consider it in the context of the past 10 years, everything was much more miserable before. Now there are some benches popping up in the yards, places that are more recreational and more attractive than they used to be. You'll have to answer the question too. No, please, no. I can't articulate my thoughts well and do not speak Russian at all. Make it short. No, no. You can say that the people are good here. People aren't really nice, to be honest. All this horror goes on, of course, because everything is stuck in traffic here and it's impossible to cross the road. There is a pedestrian crossing, but because every bad person in these cars is afraid that if there is more than a meter in front of the next car, someone will squeeze through here. So look at how people cross the road. 
They just walk under those trucks. Why are you standing on pedestrian crossing? And so? The rules weren't written for you? What? I can't hear you. Why would I want to be a driver? How do I live without a car here? It's much easier without a car. Much easier, but when you are standing here, we can go anywhere. We have to walk between all these cars. It takes a minute. The dude I called an ass asked me if I was a driver. Apparently there is favorite argument. That since I'm not a driver, I don't understand their misery. How so? It turns out this poor driver has to stand in traffic and I have to feel sorry for him. And the fact that it's impossible to walk around the city? They don't care about it at all. It's a red light. But these stupid drivers drive out and block the oncoming traffic. Do you resent this behavior? It's like every morning, every evening, all the time, it's normal. What should we, the people of Vladivostok, do about it? Change the structure of the roads. Narrow them down? Yeah. So we narrow them, we introduce pay parking, we develop public transport and then it'll be okay. Oh, he's doing well. There's a man resting with a view of traffic. And here we have two stations. There is a passenger ship terminal and there is a rail station. Exhausted people come here from Moscow because the journey from Moscow to Vladivostok takes almost seven days. When you look at all these squares around the stations, both harbor and the railway one, you also want to remind yourself of train station in Oslo. You go out in Oslo and the stations there is a cool playground, scooter rentals, nice public spaces. It's also near the harbor, but there are cafes, people are walking. The first thing a person sees when getting off the train is the station square. So it should be as green and pleasant as possible. It should be a contrast to the industrial railway. Where is smoke, soot, metal and all the super tech stuff. You get tired of that on the road and you just want to get out and hug a tree. Here the only thing you can hug is the wheel of a lorry and that's it, there is nothing to hug, that is bad. This whole thing needs to be reconstructed. Look, you go out here and you have to walk through car parks, past fences, very convenient indeed. That's all there is to this beautiful place. Hmm, look, how nice, it looks like if a church is coming out of flames. There is a bus stop and for some reason there are lorries coming. While we are standing there I heard on the radio a commercial that the Vladivostok mayor's office wants to ban vans from driving the city. That's not been implemented yet. It would be a very good decision by the way because there shouldn't be so many trucks in the city but you have to think about logistics so that they would constantly be moving around the city center with noise and rumble. But for now there is a huge traffic on them. There are two places in Russia that communists in their various gradations get widely offended by. The Yeltsin Center in Yekaterinburg and the Monument to Solzhenitsyn in Vladivostok. In Vladivostok there is a monument to Solzhenitsyn because in 1994, when he was returned to Russia after being forced into exile, he came back through Vladivostok. And so there is a such great monument from an artistic point of view. I like it. It looks like he's coming ashore from a ship. It's very cool. It's great that some people still get offended by this monument. It's very cool. I've been here quite a lot and Vladivostok hasn't changed. So when we walk along this seafront to the sea tourism center, if we want to go further, we have to walk along the railway tracks, along this dusty roadside. And this is where they made a crossing. The implication is that we can cross the road, but we can't cross it because there's no crossing here. We have to walk along the tracks, along the rocks, to the pedestrian crossing, which is located 50 meters from the end of the embankment. There is a pavement through the bushes, but people do not use it because nobody likes walking next to foreign lorries that blow emission in your face. That's why everyone who walks here is sad. Where are you from? I'm from Perm. No way, how do you like Vladivostok? Yeah, I've been here before. They can't make a normal pavement here. Yeah, a normal crossing would be nice too. Yes, there is no crossing, well noticed, and the cars, the traffic jams, the lorries, there's no such thing in Perm. No, Perm is better in that respect. Have you been to Perm too? Of course, 
There is no such thing in Perm, only in Vladivostok. They bought their own cars and they constantly stand here all smoky, noisy, with these exhaust fumes everywhere. It's impossible to cross the street, do you agree? Yeah, I agree. People from Perm agree with me. Despite the fact that I haven't been to Perm yet, I had to cheat a little bit, I'll come to Perm, I promise. Otherwise, I'll be ashamed of myself. But the point is that the man agrees with me. He also asked where is the pavement and where is everything else. All the people walk here because they don't want to walk along the road. And this miracle pavement ends here. That's it. So there's a pavement here and it ends up with nothing. Then you have to climb up here, it's dark, it's horrible, and there's a loads of unfinished constructions. This is supposed to be a hotel. It's dark and you can't see it now, but I've been going to Vladivostok for a few years now and this unfinished hotel has been here all this time. You walk here, there's no pavement, there's nothing. It triggers me. Just like Stalinists are triggered by Solzhenitsyn, I'm triggered by all of these. Excuse me, how many years this unfinished building been standing here for? Ten years. And why haven't they finished it, do you know? Because they stole the money and everything. Because we don't have money for proper equipment, we have to walk around here with a torch. That's YouTube using whatever's available. The pavement is only a meter and there are all these cars parked here. How can you walk with a pram? It's so bad. How do people live here? It's horrible, man. We reached the end of the pavement, this is where it really ends, this is the end. If we want to get back to the seafront, we have to cross the railway tracks here and then get through some unthinkable potholes and mud, go to the car park and only then we can go further to the seafront. I wrote about it a year ago, two years ago, five years ago. The locals are angry at me. They all love their city so much, they say how dare you criticize our city, get out, don't come to Vladivostok again. If every outraged local who is angry and writes all sorts of curses on the internet would just come out here and lay one brick each the whole road around all of Vladivostok would already be perfectly leveled, made of beautiful bricks but there is still no road because everyone can go on for years in the internet saying how much they love the Vladivostok while in fact Vladivostok is a horrible, dangerous, inconvenient city that no one really cares about because writing comments on the internet, my friends, is not the same thing as cleaning up the place. Man, do something to make this shameful thing go away. You can clean up your own seafronts, but you are all heroes and patriots. What else is new in Vladivostok? There are even more holes in the playground on the embankment. This shattered playground hasn't appeared here yesterday, nor two years ago, nor three years ago. I've been watching it since 2015 or 2013 and it's getting worse every year. But nobody cares. Everything is broken. I wonder who came up with the idea of doing plastic decking instead of wooden decking. There are nails sticking out here, they really do. Children play here and what should be done to get this notice and fixed somehow? Probably just get off the couch and go to a rally, block off some streets. They should elect a mayor, go to the polls, do something, but no, because usually it all ends with an outrage in the media. They put together a whole show. The last time I came, they put together a whole TV show when they discussed what a Betty Verlamp was. How dare I pour so much dirt in their favorite Vladivostok? What can I say about Verlamov is that his strange attitude, the man whips bloody tears of grief admiring our city, chokes on crabs and writes tons of nonsense. On the contrary, there is not enough parking. This is what we are fighting for today. Once a new master plan will be adopted, the city of Vladivostok will become a new capital. That's it, friends. Once again, there are kids skating here and this is what we see around. Nothing changes. There's some space here, they put some tiles and it's supposed to be... I honestly don't know what it's supposed to be, but it's definitely not that. As far as I remember, it was supposed to be a contemporary art center like the one in Moscow. But as we can see, there is nothing. All the windows are empty, nobody moved in here. There is no bushes development and there is no embankment. In some amazing way, Vladivostok is not developing at all. They are lucky that 10 years ago they had a lot of money poured in and did something here, but why has it stopped? 
I have this idea that it's developing in leaps and bounds. I mean, everybody was moving forward, Vladivostok was standing on the margins. It was still in the 90s and they kicked it, gave it money and built an airport, bridges, some infrastructure and said, well, come on, you can do it for yourself now. And it bounced back after 10 years, got better and then sat down and again nothing happens for the last 10 years. All the facilities they had and haven't had time to deliver, like the settlement, have been standing empty for years, nothing is happening. Last time this lantern was leveled, now it's crooked, one has burned out, that's all the changes in Vladivostok. The fact that there are traffic jams is understandable, they will always be here until they start to put in order the paid parking and public transport, but for some reason there are always stinking trucks here, you walk like there's a tailpipe in your face and you get these exhaust fumes. How do people even live here? There's constant noise and there's constant stench from these exhaust fumes. If you talk to the locals, everyone says we love Vladivostok because of the nature. There is such fantastic nature, there is no such nature in Moscow. Locals adore their nature and they say it's some kind of heritage, but they live like in a gas chamber with stinking cars. Vladivostok urgently needs a road revolution. They need to get rid of all of this stuff. They need to completely revamp the transportation scheme to develop public transport and to drive cars away urgently. Something needs to be done, otherwise they will all die in these exhaust fumes in these cars. Vladivostok is terrible. Others will probably praise it, but if you turn off any main street, I live on fucking street. Yes, I know that. But I don't agree with you about cars. How come? Well, it seems to me that in Moscow there is some terrorism towards car owners. But otherwise it would be like this. Maybe, but when you can't go somewhere because you can't park, it's too long to walk. You always have to ask the question, what should a person who doesn't have a car do? What do grandmothers do? What do children under 18 do? For whom do we make the city convenient? And most people don't have a car, they don't have money, they don't drive for health reasons because of their age. 80% of Muscovites don't use a car, you know? We can only sympathize. And it seems to me that a city should be made primarily for people who don't have a car. And then it will be convenient for everyone else. And you will have an alternative to take the subway. You are depriving people of the pleasure. Because when you park outside a restaurant and all your family gets out of the car, it feels great. And when you say, let's take a subway, well, good restaurants have valet parking or have paid parking. That's true, yeah, but there are many places that they are hard to get to thanks to your efforts. I'm glad. The doom was, on the one hand, to able to drive to the city center all the time in comfort. On the other hand, he doesn't like what is happening in Vladivostok. Friends, miracles do not happen. Any city is set up in such a way that everyone who wants to come to the center just physically does not fit. So you have to limit it. And there is no city in the world which managed to become convenient for a car. We decided to go to observation deck, because it is another place I go all the time and it's special experience. This observation deck has a great view of the bridge, it's now ruined, all dusty and disgusting. It's not cared for like everything else. And now I want to go there and see if it's tied up or not. The map takes us some weedy steps and I have a feeling it's not quite the right road, but we'll give it a try. There's a hole in the wall here. Nah, we're not going to make it through here. In Soviet times there was a staircase and you can climb up here. Now you can probably walk around in amongst these disgusting trucks. Oh no! I was hoping we'd travel on the cable car. But it's closed. I suggest we call a taxi. Yes, Kier? It's not me, it's Kier who tired. Kier wants to call a taxi. I'd walk, but for your sake, I'm prepared to call a taxi. Meanwhile, we are walking upstairs in total darkness. There's not a single lantern is working. There's a lot of people up here, though. The whole road is a mess. And that's the biggest mystery to me. Why is this happening here? It's one of the main attractions in Vladivostok. Lots of people come here to admire the view, the bridge. No, nothing changed here either. It's all drags falling apart. The sign says they helped build the memorial. There are tourists standing around taking pictures. That's not a single working lantern. 
One of the most iconic views of Vladivostok is of this bridge. Tourists come here to take cool photos, there are nice shots and look at the state it's in. Everything is falling apart, everything is decaying, no one is doing anything about it. Even the lander is unlit now. I don't know if it's like today or for a long time, it's impossible to drive here properly. I'm not even mentioning that in any other country there would be a toilets, souvenirs, cafes and so on. Here's a complete disaster. Construction, fences, and this is happening everywhere. Everything that was done 10 years ago is getting worse and worse every year. Everything is degrading, everything is falling apart. Nothing is being done in the city. They are doing fine with high-rise development, with advertising, with trade, but they can't make at least one normal public space. It's more difficult task, I see. Apparently it's not so profitable, so they don't bother with it. Enjoy the view! Tourists have come from Korea and they all walk with torches, like fireflies. Korean tourists just fell down of a broken staircase, it's a real shame. It is really embarrassing. A bus with tourists arrived and everyone is carrying torches up these ramshackle stairs. It's just embarrassing. They have such surprised faces because I don't think anybody expects to see such a terrible tourist attraction because there is no such thing in Korea. I don't know what to do. I don't live in Vladivostok. If I lived here, I would definitely write angry comments to people who are responsible for this. We have to do something about it because it's not right at all. Someone fell down there again. I don't understand what's going on. I mean, a woman fell down and they are shining a torch as she hit her head. Such a typical pavement. He will have a chain, he will have a bin, he will have a porch. In fact, they have created obstacle in a flat place. Because all of the fact that there is an entrance to some office center will have an obstacle on a flat surface for all the people with reduced mobility. There are cities where cars are considered an important social attribute. If you're cool, you should have a car. And Vladivostok is such a city. You can see that in the evening people are driving around in their cars with the windows open, music playing from their cars, showing their status to everyone. What kind of advertising can be there in Vladivostok? Free parking? Of course. The illumination of the buildings is worth mentioning separately. It is a very important element of perception of the city, especially at night. It's very relevant to Russia, where in winter the daylight are not very long in many cities, people see the city purely in the evening, when they are walking around after work, and that's why it is so important. When there is no city-wide concept how to illuminate the city at night, it is perceived completely wrong. And of course, in a good city there is a consistent concept of lightning. In Vladivostok it's not. Some buildings are completely out of balance, there are some slums, you can't see anything at all. There is something lit up, something illuminated, somebody's got their building lit up, somewhere only advertising signs are lit up. It's sad, they have to address illumination as well. This is the Lotte Hotel, built by Koreans. It's an international chain, a five-star hotel and it's one of the best hotels in Vladivostok, if not the best. If we get here by car, there's a driveway, but there is no pedestrian walkway. Here you have to wade through some blocks. There's a path already. Of course there can't be any fountain here, it's just a plain car park. Vladivostok boasts some of the most incredible solutions. There's some kind of giant zebra crossing here. There's a traffic light pole in the middle of the intersection. There's a U junction again. You can cross here, you can cross here, but there's no crossing there. Every other car here almost skids into the corner because look at the turning radius here. It's like a racetrack, not a city center. And look, there is huge amount of traffic that is rushing down these roads right now. Kerr decided to time the red light. 1 minute and 20 seconds so far. But I don't think you've started straight away, have you? Well, it was about 10 seconds later, but it's already a minute and a half, you know? No, that's not good enough. People can't take it anymore and go to red. How long? Almost two minutes. They've got red lights everywhere for a minute and a half or two minutes here. There are cars parked on the pedestrian street at night for some reason. What is this? This is the Vladivostok City Department for 
municipal education institutions. They have learned how to park cars, but they have not learned how to look after the historic buildings, of which there are not so many in the center. Look, I'm a mam advisory here. Since when has this been here? The sign looked pretty new, to be honest. I look at all of these and it really seems hard for me to be a patriot of Vladivostok, because you have to be very aggressive. When this video comes out, I mean, the viewers who are watching it now, for them it's already out. You can check the local media to Vladivostok bloggers the next day and they will be going off at me. They will put together shows where they discuss how all these Muscovites come to them and say nasty things about their city. So it's not them who are doing nasty things, it's us who are doing that. We come here and we insulting them. So the fact that the lies don't work properly doesn't bother anyone. Well, let's see the reaction. Because it seems to me that now is just sad. You lose any motivation and you know nothing good is going to happen. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to share the video on Reddit and send it to your friends on WhatsApp.